What's up dreamers? So today the topic of discussion is FIFA and more importantly the Qatar World Cup 2022. Now FIFA and the World Cup have been getting into a lot of controversy recently and none of it has been good, let's be honest. Essentially, not only is the location of the World Cup a problem, not only is just the activity that's been going on there a problem, but people have also been accusing FIFA and the location, Qatar, of being very problematic in terms of racial issues and issues with the infamous LGBTQ plus community. The first issue comes with where the World Cup is being based. The World Cup is stationed currently in Qatar, which is over in the Middle East, and people have a lot of issues with this because of the fact that they are seen as more traditionally valued people. When I say this, I mean that the area is riddled with power families and there's a lot of families that adhere to very very traditional and non-new ideas of thinking. There have actually been reports of slave-like labor being involved in the construction of the arena in the first place. So reportedly people are saying that over 6,000 workers have died in the construction of the Qatar World Cup arena. Now on top of that Workers have reportedly said that they were treated very adversely. They tried to leave the country. They were barred from leaving. And not only were they barred from leaving, if they went to their employers to try to discuss or complain, they were met with threats to their life, to their income, and to their families. Additionally, FIFA has had a vast history of not only racism, anti-Semitism, but just a lot of hatred within their fan base, especially within areas like Russia and Italy. Italy is very, very well known for its racism in football. We can think of many examples. I can just think off my head as a football fan when you think of people like Mario Balotelli, who were told that even though they were born and raised in Italy and play for the Italian national team, that they aren't truly Italian because of the color of his skin. Another example that comes to mind is uh, Kevin Prince Boateng. I remember that he actually had a stint where he had to walk off of the pitch because fans were howling and chanting monkey sounds at him every time he would even touch the ball and dribble. Another example comes with Kevin Constant. He is a player who, while he was playing for Atalanta United, there was bananas thrown at this man in the middle of a game. Like, come on, Italy, you have got to do better. And even more recently in 2018, when Russia hosted the World Cup, there were reports that Russia wasn't doing their due diligence to combat racism and combat the racist things that happened at their games. Although Russia did, in their defense, say that they did employ enough money and enough tactics to combat the racism. Recently, the president of FIFA has come out and released a statement and sort of like a 45 minute interview that he was meant to do with press in regards to how he felt about the current array of just conflict and um, controversy that has arisen in terms of the location and the proceedings of the World Cup. And this is what he had to say. Today, I have uh, very strong feelings. I can tell you that. Today I feel uh, Qatari. Today I feel Arab. Today I feel African. Today I feel uh, gay. Today I feel disabled. Today I feel uh, a migrant worker. He then followed this by stating that he was also bullied for how he looked when he was younger. He stated that he had freckles and that when he was growing up instead of instead of throwing accusations at his enemies and instead of trying to pick fights and form more argument his main way of combating these people that were bullying him was by opening discussions and trying to understand. Now, he also threw a bit of a sub at American culture, Western culture, by saying that our number one go-to is to complain, is to try to point fingers and take a moral high ground. And he did this 
like he did at the beginning of his statement by stating that as a European, for what Europeans have done for the past 3,000 years, they should have another 3,000 years of apologizing. I'm European. Actually, I am European. Not just I feel European. I think for what we Europeans have been doing in the last 3,000 years around the world, we should be apologizing for the next 3,000 years before starting to give moral lessons to people. What many people are finding even more contradictory to what he recently stated is the actions that FIFA has recently taken on teams and players that have tried to even support basic things like human rights. A team that is a perfect example of this would be Denmark. Denmark recently tried to spout a kit that had human rights for all across and embedded in the actual sewing of the kit. FIFA advised against this and Denmark in response responded that they just weren't going to be taking part and that their royal family would be staying at home as to not try to raise any more revenue for the World Cup. Other teams were reportedly seen attempting to wear either pride color, rainbow colored kits, rainbow colored armbands, and they were actually advised against wearing those for their own safety. Now, as we know, the Middle East is a place that isn't necessarily tolerant of all of this LGBTQ plus nonsense that we spout over in America. Now, we might be more tolerant, we might be more accepting, but does that not play into the narrative that the president was speaking of? Are we the better nation? Should we be in the position to tell other nations exactly what it is that we should be allowed to advocate and advertise in their nations? If this is another nation that we're talking about, shouldn't we be adhering to what their moral code is, to what their beliefs are? And should FIFA as an organization that bases its games, its matches, and more importantly, its hugest event, its World Cups in different nations, different cultures, should it be flexible enough to adjust to the atmosphere of working in a place like, let's say, Qatar or Saudi Arabia or Dubai. Those in American and Western culture obviously feel that there is a giant, giant problem with this. Not only is it not inclusive and not culturally diverse to be accepting of people who are of the LGBTQ plus background, but they also have a huge problem with the complaints of workers in Qatar. Before these stadiums were built, there were a lot of imported workers that were brought over from Asian and South Asian locations to work long, long hours in constructing this building. And as we know, Qatar is very, very hot, very, very gruesome work zones, and they were not paid in, in a proper manner. But not only were they underpaid, they were overworked and rights were taken away from them in terms of being able to leave the country and even being threatened if they tried to form a complaint. Obviously, we know that there is nothing right about that. But the question still remains. Should we be berating FIFA? Should we be berating Qatar for their beliefs, for their morals, and for the way that they conduct business in their country? It's a very, very, very good question because, in my opinion, we can't tell them what we should be allowed to advertise. They run their World Cup how they would like to run their World Cup. And I also don't think we should be admonishing FIFA as much as we are. While they do hold a large responsibility in making sure that everybody's cultures and everybody's beliefs are represented in a fair and equitable manner, we have to think about this. If we have to make sure that American and Western cultures are represented fairly and equitably at the expense of stomping on Islamic and Middle Eastern cultures and morals and beliefs, that is not fair and equitable. That is bullying. And what we are trying to avoid here, as he said in his speech, is an instance where we combat bullying by being bigger bullies. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Let me know if you think that FIFA and Qatar are corrupt, racist, and anti-LGBTQ. And if you do, share your thoughts. Let me know a little bit more. In my opinion, I think that just like in America, where we have the far left and we have the far right, 
and they all go back and forth, back and forth, we should have the same types of discussions with other nations to be able to understand their traditional values and their traditional cultures and be able to integrate those into things like the World Cup without making this a big deal about who's right, who's more morally correct, and who's more power hungry. Because let's be real, there's corruption everywhere, people. America ain't pretty. America's history is far from clean. So let's not act like Qatar's history should be squeaky clean for them to be able to host the World Cup. Let's not act like other nations that have different cultural perspectives and different cultural views should be squeaky clean histories and should be perfect for them to be able to host the World Cup. At the end of the day, let's get together to watch some football and put all this political BS to the side just for a couple months. Please. Dreamers, out.